Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Moira Flood, and I'm the Alumni Engagement Manager here at Alverno. Thank you so much again for tuning into our May programming, which will feature Alverno Volunteerism Spotlight interviews. Today, I am joined by alum Joanna Bausch. Joanna, could you share a bit about yourself and what your nine to five role looks like on an average day? Yes. Hi, Moira. Thank you so much for having me. Um, always excited to come back to Alverno um, and participate in different activities and, and support any way I can. But um, so, yeah, my name's Joanna. I uh, was, I'm from Milwaukee, born and raised. I grew up here in the near south side of the city. I went to, I was a returning student at Alverno and I was part of the weekend program. I think I was one of the last incoming classes of the weekend program because I know we don't offer that anymore. But um, I graduated in 2017, so not too long ago. Um, I had a goal to get my degree before I hit 30, and so I accomplished that. Thank you. Yeah. And then I work currently for Citizen Action of Wisconsin. I'm the movement politics director. And in that role, I work with folks that are interested in running for office uh, all across the state. So we're a statewide organization. um, And I just work with people around developing their skills related to um, running campaigns, um, being in elected office in all levels of government, right? So school board, city council, um, county board, uh, state legislature, the Senate, U.S. Senate, all of that good stuff. Um, and I just really come from a background of nonprofit work. I've, I've worked a lot in social justice, um, learning about social justice probably for the first time when I was 20 or when I was 18. And um just kind of have been involved in different ways um, since then, whether it be uh, as a community organizer, sitting on a board for a nonprofit organization, running for office, uh, running political campaigns and whatnot. I think that it's really important for us as um, residents and people of this community um, to be involved and active in, you know, the policies and quote, rules that are made for us, right? I think that uh, we all deserve a seat at the table. And I think through advocacy and, you know, working in local politics, I help folks, you know, find their voice and um, make sure that they're uplifting the voices of everyone in their community. That's wonderful. And it's obviously a much needed resource, especially in our current climate and, and with everything that's going on both locally and nationally, just having people that not only are informed, but about passionate about the work that they're doing, which is wonderful. And, and I appreciate your, your continued support of that. Um, so your background is focused on a variety of different ways, as you said, to advocate for those who may not have a voice or helping to uplift those that um, whose voices might be a little stifled at times. Why was it important to you to pursue that work? Well, I think for me, so like, more specifically on the advocacy and social justice work that I do, I uh, prioritize on women of color, people of color, women and girls of color. Uh, My first role, uh, I would say, as a community organizer was for an organization called the Reproductive Justice Collective, which advocated specifically for women and girls of color um, around democracy, right? So making sure that women of color had access to the ballot and were participating in all the elections that happened um, in their communities. Um, and so I think for me, I mean, I come from a family of women, right? I come from a very matriarchal family. I was raised by a single mom. Um, I have a brother, but, uh, but I have three sisters. Um, and so there was just a lot of women around me. And I think that it was like really important for us in our household to, to like find our voice as though, as women, right? Because I'm also a, a Latina woman where, in Latino culture, we sometimes prioritize and lift up men's voices over, over our women. Right. And, um, it was just a very different dynamic in my family, right? Because we had these old school values, but yet we were a bunch of women. And so, um, I think I was really passionate about just wanting to support other women as I felt supported in my household. Right. Because, you know, I have a really, um, you know, strong, independent sister, like I said, raised by a single mom. 
you know, I had a grandmother that migrated from Texas to Wisconsin, you know, in search of like better job opportunities to raise her, you know, nine children. Um, and she did that all by herself without a husband. Right. And so I like, I, I come from this very strong, um, women roots. And I think I just wanted to make sure that other women in my community felt as empowered as I did. Um, and, and, and that was something I learned along the way, right? When I learned about social justice at 18 and almost on accident, my sister took me to, uh, a training for women and getting women to run for office. And I met a woman there named Sarah Noble, who, um, was starting the organization, the Reproductive Justice Collective. And she really brought me on as like this informal mentor mentee relationship. And, um, I remember initially thinking like, I don't even know what social justice means. Like, what are you talking about? Um, And so like, she really kind of explained it to me. And then I think through learning about advocacy and and being a community organizer, I learned that my passion was really around like empowering women, women of color, you know, and then, and then when I went to Alverno, right. And all women's (laughs) college where that just like was enforced uh, times a million. Yeah, it all comes together, isn't that? It wonderful? does. That's great. And it's so good to hear too, especially that that women in the community are taking an interest in in the young people um, and, and really investing in those that will be continuing to move the mission forward in the future. And and it's so wonderful to to hear that you had such a great relationship with Sarah and that she she found that thing in you or that you um, we're able to click with her in such a way that it, it really, the stars aligned, if you will. And, and now, now look at you. So that's so yeah, true. absolutely. And I can, and I still consider Sarah Noble a very close mentor. Um, uh, but right. I think that that's, what's key is making sure that we're investing in our younger communities. I mean, I even think of that in my own role, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I, I might, I consider myself as a young woman of color, right? I'm 33 mm-hmm. years old. But I see younger leaders coming up after me. You know, I, I go to, I go to events or you know, before COVID, go to events and um, you know, see these marches going on in our communities, these protests and these um, different advocates coming out, and so I don't recognize them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're all like younger people. You know, um, teenagers and folks in their twenties. And like, that's, that's so like heartwarming. Like, I love to see that. Um, I think about when I was in high school, um, and I, I don't remember having access to these advocacy groups. I don't remember somebody telling me at 15, 16, that I had it in me to change what our community looks like. Um, and so to see, you know, like these, um, you know, youth advocating for different issues um, that are impacting them and their community and their families and their homes. Um, It's just a beautiful thing. And I think that if we can always, you know, continue our work, but also like look and lift up the people coming behind us, that's like really what's, what's key and what's going to keep us moving and, you know, keep progressing forward. It doesn't make any sense for us to make progress and then not like share our knowledge, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the generations after us, right? Like, why would we make them start from scratch? Uh, And so I I learned that early on and and I hope to always be that type of person. You know, I always, if if people, folks reach out to me like for one-on-ones and stuff, I'm always like willing to like connect, share anything I know, um, you know, just to support folks. I think that that's the the number one thing we need to be constantly doing is supporting and like lifting each other up and opening the door for the next person. Yeah, I love that sentiment. And I, I, I 100% agree with you that why kind of leave, leave everything that we've done so far, you know, where, where we're at when you have so many empowered and inspiring young people that, that can continue that mission. Um, so speaking of, of giving back and kind of lifting people up, you are also a board member of a few different organizations, um, True School the Milwaukee Water Commons and Clark Square Neighborhood Initiative. Um, do you want to share a little bit about these organizations and what drew you to each of them and, and what um, keeps you involved? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with True School um, because it's the organization that I've been connected to the longest and, and not just as a board member, but as a supporter. I learned about True School oh, over a decade ago, I feel like. Um, But I learned about them um, when I was with the Reproductive Justice Collective. We were sharing space with True School. 
Um, uh, and so I got to know the, the organization, you know, at the time, the program director, Shalina Ali, who's now co-executive director. Um, and so I've been on the board for a couple of years now and really just love this thing, organization when we think, when we talk about investing in our youth, right? True School is absolutely doing that in real time, investing in our youth um, through hip hop and education, you know, wanting to get our, our young people active um, in advocacy and social justice through hip hop, right? And I just think that that's a beautiful thing because yes, we have a bunch of youth that want to get active and want to start, um, you know, getting involved with their communities and stuff. And sometimes we have young people that aren't necessarily interested in that or or don't know how to get started interest or don't know how to get started to get involved in that work right but 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 they love music and and they love um art and they love you know different aspects of of culture of the, of the hip-hop culture right and so true school really like makes creates the segue right like they create the intersection of of hip-hop and education and advocacy and um, it's it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, they do so many um, community projects where they are like uh, creating murals, creating green spaces, um, you know, DJing for different community events, like just really bringing the fun into just in different different social justice issues. I, I love that organization. It's such a beautiful thing. Um, what the, what they're doing there, Shalina and Fidel, they're the co-directors. Um, but yeah, so True School is all about working with our young people and getting them active in social justice and advocacy. Um, the Milwaukee Water Commons. Now, it's funny because when I was asked to join the Milwaukee Water Commons board, I was like, why Why me? You know, I don't know much about environmental justice issues. You know, that was never my purview, right? Um, and um, I, they at the Milwaukee Water Commons, they also have a co-executive director modelship and one of their co-directors, Brenda Coley, she's the one who's asking me to join the board. And I'm telling her, I don't know nothing about water. And she says, you know, everything about organizing and advocacy and social justice. And that's exactly what we're doing here at the Milwaukee Water Commons, except we're focusing on clean water. And <clears throat> she really like, Brenda really made it clear for me how important it is for communities of color to advocate to advocate for um, environmental justice issues, right? Climate and equity is very much a people of color thing. And I learned that through ben Brenda Coley and the Milwaukee Water Commons. You know, for a lot, a long time, um, my work through in social justice, I felt like was on, you know, these like day-to-day -day survival things, right? Like making sure that we had access to healthcare, making sure that we had, um, you know, a, a decent minimum wage, $15 in a union, um, right? And and I and I thought like environmental stuff was, you know, kind of like on the side, like, oh, we don't have time for that, for that mm -hmm. right now, right? Like we have to do these things that are um, impacting our everyday survival. And when I, when I learned more about the Milwaukee Water Commons, I learned that environmental justice, clean water, climate, those are absolutely related to everyday survival issues. Um, and communities of color are the ones that are facing, um, you know, uh, sorry. Challenges, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Yes, yeah, right? Like communities of colors are absolutely the ones facing the highest um, disparities when it comes to environmental issues, right? Like I think about here in the South side, even growing up, um, you know, if, you live here on the south side, you turn on the water, you see brown water and, and folks just wait for it to get clear. And they think that that's normal. Mm -hmm. Right. And the Milwaukee Water Commons is absolutely trying to change that, making sure that we're having access to clean, safe waterways. Um, and so, yes, absolutely love this organization. Really excited to be a part of it. Looking forward to having um, that, getting back to some in-person events. They have some signature events where um, one of my favorites is the Cream City Classic, and that's where we um, host an open swim in the Milwaukee River, right? That's and cool. like the idea, yeah, it's it's super cool, right? Because when I, I I never thought that we could get in the Milwaukee River, right? Like we think <laughs> about how contaminated it is, yeah. and like it's really gross. Um, and right, Milwaukee Water Commons is trying to break down those barriers so that we all know that hey, this is our area, this is our waterways, this is where we can have fun um, and learn. 
and, you know, and drink clean, safe water. And so just that like visual, visual of seeing people get into the river, I think Mm -hmm. is huge. Um, and wanting and making sure that we're creating, um, water stewards that we put, that's what we call them at the Milwaukee water commons. And then lastly, uh, Clark Square Neighborhood Initiative. I just joined this board earlier in the year in January. And so I'm, I'm a newer board member, but I'm really excited for this to, to be on this board. This organization, um, Clark Square Neighborhood is, is located on the near south side, uh, which is where I'm from. I grew up in the, in the Clark Square neighborhood specifically. My grandma owned a house on um, 22nd and Pierce right across the street from Mitchell Street Park. Sure. And, and so, you know, this is just has everything to do with my roots and, you know, where I come from. Um, and my, my, my connection and my family's connection to Milwaukee. And so Clark Square focuses on neighborhood um, advocacy, making sure that our residents have um, a clean, safe neighborhood to live, work, and play. Uh, so we work with, you know, the surrounding businesses to um, make sure that we're supporting them. We, we work with the residents to make sure that they have... Um, you know, just different uh, information about what's going on in the city, right? Like, so we did, most recently did a canvas um, with the firefighters, with the firefighters to knock on doors to let residents know that they can basically call the fire department and get a free smoke alarm installed in their house, right? And and we had when we did this partnership with the firefighters at this time, we had some firefighters on you know on deck with us canvassing, doing immediate installations of these uh, smoke detectors for residents that need them. So it's it's just really about getting the community active, making sure that they have access to the resources that are available to them. Um, and so you know that's like right up my alley, right? And especially com- coming from my community um, and the near South Side, which is uh, you know a lot of a, a large Latinx population, right? And so it, it just makes me really happy to to be connected with this organization. We just had a plant sale last weekend where, you know, neighbors were able to walk to um, a neighborhood school and, and and buy a plant for a few bucks. You get to know some of their neighbors in a safe space. And, and it's it was just a beautiful thing. So Great. all three of these organizations, just they make my heart so happy. I'm super yeah. honored and grateful to be connected to them. Yeah. And they're so, I mean, on the surface, they seem so diverse, but it seems like the core mission of it is to really meet people where they're at, at various stages of their lives and to, to educate them first and foremost, um, you know, about resources, about community work, about education, things along those lines that, you know, I think especially, um, you know, in, in the city of Milwaukee sometimes can be really isolating or really segregating in that sometimes those services aren't accessible or sometimes people just don't know how to access them. Um, so I think it's great, you know, right. especially with the, with the, um, the fire detector or the smoke detectors and, um, and, and creating a safe space, as you said, to, to get to know your neighbors and to, to really reinvest in your community, I think is so important. So I really, really love that, that approach to yeah. all of that. Um, when reflecting on your path to board membership, what stands out to you as one of the the greatest rewards or one of the best skills that you've accumulated along the way? I think learning, um, you know, how to be a better community member has been the best, right? Like, you know, I think about just the different services all of these organizations provide, the different constituencies that they serve. Um, and and to learn from all of them has truly been a blessing, right? Like we can't be a helpful, supportive, you know, person in our community if we don't know what like our neighbors need to, right? You know, Mm -hmm. I just think that it's really important to, to know what, what other folks in our community are going through, right? It's not just our own story, right? Just because we're happy, healthy, and thriving. Um, it doesn't make a, a good, a good neighborhood, a good community, a good city or state. If folks, if other folks aren't right, if other folks are struggling, um, and just barely surviving. And so, um, you know, I, I get a taste of kind of all these different worlds, you know, I, I get to work with 
with young folks from all over the city that have, you know, super unique backgrounds that um, are extremely talented and are often feeling dismissed by adults or, or society, right? Um, I get to work in the neighborhood that I grew up in that raised me. Um, and, you know, I, I just bought a house and I, I get to like feel connected and feel like rooted and as a staple in this community. Um, you know, I get to learn about the different um, advocacy projects that folks are doing around environmental issues. I think it's just like learning and taking in all this information um, and figuring out how to apply it in different spaces, right? Like, like you said, like, it seems like these organizations are all different, but at their core, it, they all are about the same thing. And it's like you said, meeting people where you're at. And I think that that's huge. You know, I don't think that anything about my life was traditional, right? I was raised by a single mom. I probably went to four or five different high schools just for various reasons. Um, I was a non-traditional college student where, you know, where I went to school, I returned back to school for the last time at 26 and got my degree right before I turned 30. Um, you know, nothing about my life has been traditional and I just think about how grateful and how, how, how supported I felt by other folks that that knew that they had to meet me where I was at, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be, you know, my run-ins with the criminal justice system or attending my Alverno graduation or, you know, whatever it may be, folks always were meeting me where I was at and supporting me to, so I could get to the next step. And I feel like that's what I'm doing in all three of these different organizations as a board member. Definitely. And I, I appreciated your point about um, the Milwaukee Water Commons and when you were initially being sort of courted for their board that, you know, again, it's on the surface saying, I don't know much about water or environmental causes or things like that. But I think you uh, touched on it a little bit of, of you have such a unique perspective and because you didn't have what would be considered a traditional um, upbringing or, you know, a, a traditional story that that allows you to bring so much more to the table and you have so many diverse experiences, you've had so much life experience that it makes you that much more valuable because you can speak to successes, hardships, you can speak to various types of education and, um, you know, purchasing a home in the neighborhood that you, um, you know, grew up in and, and things like that. I, I just, I am so glad that you were able to touch on all of those things. Um, yeah. and, and it reflects in your volunteerism and in your work of, you know, how valuable and how um, impactful being not only open to new experiences, but also being willing to share the things that you've been through in your life um, can, can be to, to so many others in the community and, and outside of your community even. So thank you for being so, so candid with that as well. Um, in terms of your kind of board membership and volunteerism, has there been a point at which you've faced a challenge that you've you've run into and just thought, I have to take this on? Um, or something that looking back now seemed like such a significant hurdle, but but you overcame it in in, in such a way that it looked like it was easy? <laughs> uh, I feel like that's with everything I do. You know, I'm I'm constantly thinking that these that, that what I want to accomplish is, isn't obtainable, right? Like we can't do it. We can't get it done. I can't do it. I can't get it done. Um, but everything I always, I'm constantly amazing myself. And <clears throat> I feel like we're all, we all do that to ourselves because we're all our, our toughest critics. Right. And so, um, I don't know, I would say, you know, this isn't a huge project, but like one of the things that really intimidated me about joining a board is reviewing finances and budgets um, for like a whole organization, right? You know, I've managed budgets for projects um, throughout my entire career, but to look at an organization and oversee, um, you know, all the complexities that goes into receiving grants and what those, what those grant dollars are for and making sure 
sure that we have, you know, funding coming in the door for, you know, to sustain us for the next three months, making sure folks are getting paid, right? Like their livelihood. All of these organizations that I work for are run by um, people, majority people of color and people that are from these neighborhoods um, that this is their livelihood, right? And so like to be responsible for that was was super intimidating actually to join a board. Um, you know, but I think about uh, at that, the resources that I had access to, you know, I took a, um, I took the, the uh, Hispanic Professionals of Greater Milwaukee provides the board pipeline classes mm-hmm. uh, to prepare people to join boards. And, and I did that program. And right, so like I used everything that was available to me to make sure that I was ready for that because I didn't want the finances thing to hold me back or get me or make me feel intimidated to say yes to joining the board because I knew I had um, unique perspectives when it comes to programming and to community. And so I would just say like, my own, you know, kind of internal like fears of, of all of those numbers and dollars and you know all of that was like super intimidating and so getting over that and just like not being nervous or scared to ask for help or to ask for clarification like when I'm in those board meetings and also when I'm outside of those board meetings like you know it's a big commitment to be on a board meeting it's not just a monthly or bi-monthly or quarterly meeting um It's really being invested in these organizations and knowing what they do in the communities that they serve, you know, being involved in their events um, and and learning, you know, the successes and and where the organization is trying to go and and supporting them in any way you can to get them there. And so, you know, it, it takes a lot of like being present in those meetings and making sure that you're asking questions, but also doing follow up meetings with the executive directors with staffs of the organization, with other board members so that you're continuously learning. Um, and and it's a gift too at the same time, right? Because these skills are skills that you you use throughout your life. It's it's like a it's a learning opportunity. It's professional development. I, I look at it like that. And you know, I, I say yes to being on boards for organizations that I feel extremely passionate about. Um, that are being run by leaders that I feel uh, that I know I want to fully support that support me, right? Like I have a relationship with all of these executive directors outside of the organizations that they run in a sense that we are rooting for each other to be successful. And so um, I just think that that's really important, you know, and kind of straight off the question of like hurdles, but I think that that all, that all of that stuff goes into it. And um you know, I, I always think it back to, you know, being like what you said about when I, when I gave the answer about joining the Milwaukee Water Commons, I always want to be a hundred percent and truthful with people from where I'm coming from, right? Like Mm -hmm. other questions I had when joining a board is like, what's the financial commitment, right? Like some board members are expected to, to pay dues and all of that. And so like being upfront and open-ended about, what the expectations are of a board as being a board member um, is always like super important and making sure that you're having those open conversations. And I always want, um, you know, the executive directors to know this is the skill set that I bring to the table. And so like being super honest is, is, is really important, but in ourselves, like making sure that we're not diminishing our, our life skills and our life experiences, right? Like those are so valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that, for me, I, I think of that as like a hurdle, something that I had to get over, um, knowing that, you know, maybe I'm not some water expert, right? But I have a unique uh, life experience where I come from a community um, that didn't and doesn't always have access to clean waters, right? Mm-hmm. And that makes me valuable um, in a weird way to say that, right? But um, I just I just hope that folks are, are never like diminishing their their life skills and their life experiences, especially people of color, uh, folks that come from these communities that have been discriminated against. Right. Um, it's not it's not our fault uh, mm-hmm. that we didn't have access to what we needed. Um, and so just making sure that we're always, you know, tr- trusting in ourselves. Yeah. And I think, too, I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit, but I think not 
having, you know, the, the imposter syndrome has come through quite a bit recently. And I think for women, especially, and I'm, I'm sure that this impacts, um, you know, women of, of color and a lot of different cultures as well of, as you said, not feeling like my experience is not valuable because I'm not an expert in water or because I'm not a CFO or whatever the right. case may be, but just going into a situation, I think, um, being confident in, in what you do bring to the table is so important. And I feel like you really exemplify that in so many ways. So we're really proud, um, to, to okay. have that, have that demonstrated via an Alverno education as well. Um, and kind of speaking about your Alverno education, do you find that the eight abilities continue to tie into the work that you are currently doing? I know you've talked a lot about communication and, um, you know, obviously the effective citizenship piece comes in, um, the global perspective. Is there any other ones that you sort of immediately go to and say, I know that I put this into play, or I know that um, this really has helped me in, in the work that I'm doing? You know, it's all of them. <laughs> I can't even think of one of the abilities that aren't used every single day, right? Um, I, you know, in, in my current role at Citizen Action, we're look, I'm looking, I'm developing and designing a program that is pro for professional development. It's going to support people that want to either run for office or work on campaigns, right? And I'm constantly analyzing, you know, what works and what doesn't work, right? Like what makes us all Wisconsinites, but what makes us all have our unique communities, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, trying to develop those messaging that because, you know, all these, one thing that I've learned in, in my role at Citizen Action, I've really had an opportunity to not just visit other parts of the state, but have conversations with people from different parts of the state. Um, and which which I had never done before when I started Citizen Action, again, with the honesty, I told them I'm a Milwaukee girl. I don't know anything <laughs> about Wausau or La Crosse or Green Bay or, you know, I'm just it's just not my I don't know it. I'm not I don't right. never visited that part. You know, people say in Wisconsin, it's like you're either from Milwaukee or you're from Wisconsin. I'm Wrestling. from Milwaukee. <laughs> so it was it's constantly like analyzing and learning um, and problem solving. Um, you know, and, and making those decisions like, okay, this is what I think is going to work. And then just like putting it out there. Um, you know, we just, I just had a review at my job and it's like this self, it's like a self-assessment, right? They want you to self-assess yourself. And he, my, my director who I report to, he's explaining it to me and I'm just like, I got this. I'm a pro at self-assessing, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so great in my learning, um, I think Alverno has really and truly prepared me to receive feedback. Like I am constantly asking my executive director or deputy director or my colleagues, like, give me feedback, give me real feedback. Like, why was this good? What could have been better? You know, um, and all of that just makes me um, a better leader, a better, you know, movement politics director, a better neighbor, all of this stuff. And so, you know, that being that, being that comfortable with feedback is, is like one of the biggest things that I take away from Alverno um, and like having those real discussions on, you know, creating better work and, and being a better community member. And, you know, all of those things that I learned at Alverno. That's great. And I think to, you know, it's so important for me, initially the word feedback, I automatically thought like, this is what I've done wrong. Um, and I, I appreciate that you um, kind of touched on it of tell me why that was a success, you know, why that went well. Why do you think yeah. that I was successful in that? And changing the narrative around that word even, um, you know, to, to frame it in such a way that it's not, you know, feeling like I'm going to break myself down, but more so I want to learn from my successes just as much as I want to learn from my failures, uh, which is great. And I think that was one of the things that really stood out to me as well during my Alverno education is that you know, you'd hear, you have to self-assess and I'm thinking like, well, I thought I did a good job. So what, you know, um, right. why would I not do a good job? And I think the opportunity to not only take that moment and say, okay, but what, what made this successful? Um, and, and as I said, just kind of changing the, the connotation that comes with that word and, and making it mm -hmm. so that it's a productive thing, as opposed to feeling like, uh oh, here comes the bad stuff. Um, right. Know, which, I know. Which is great. 
<laughs> I hear you. I know it's like, um, you know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and I'm just like, man, I am, I'm constantly like looking, looking for the next thing, like looking yeah. to, to climb, right? Like in my role or in my volunteerism, like, <clears throat> And I think it comes from the self-assessing, right? Because, yeah, we're talking about the things that I need to improve on, but we're also discussing what I did good on, which makes me want to do it more, which makes me want to do it better, like, you know? Right. And Family so, <clears throat> exactly. And I think um, that Alberno just really put, just, you know, lit that fire in me to want to continue to grow, to want to learn more to know that it didn't stop at my graduation in 2017, right? The professional development and the, the continued education, it's ongoing and I'm constantly learning. And we're always in learning spaces too. It's just, we have to make that decision that I, I'm here to learn even every day, right? Even if I'm facilitating, I'm learning. Um, and so I think that, that, that that's something that I took away from Alverno, that every, every position I'm in, every setting I'm in is, is a learning opportunity. I love that. Um, so this is one of my favorite questions, and I'm I'm really fortunate to be able to ask a lot of different people. But what does Alverno Strong mean to you? I think Alverno Strong means, for me, it means showing up as yourself, showing up as yourself, and believing in in yourself, believing in in your life experiences, believing in your lived experience believing in not only, it wasn't just your education that got you here, but it was the family and the community that raised you and just really showing up as your true authentic self and knowing that that is enough, right? Like never underestimating your power. Um, and I think that that's what Alverno Strong means. That's beautiful. Well, that's all I have today, Joanna, but it was so great to talk with you and, and get to catch up and everything. And we're so proud of all of the work that you're doing and continuing to support the community. And thank you again so much yeah. for joining me and answering all these questions and sharing more of about course. your Alberno experience as well. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I Hit me up any anytime I can help for real. I would be involved or anything. I love Alberno and I love coming back. So that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.